Hello, and welcome to your workout for strength and balance for osteoporosis. I'm Kendra Fitzgerald, corrective exercise specialist. I'm so happy you're here to work out with me. For today's workout, equipment-wise, you'll need a medium to heavy size weight. I have 10 pounds here. You could go 8 pounds to 12 pounds for that one. And then a smaller set, maybe 2 to 5 pounds for those. We also need a band a small looped band like this. There are different weights of these as well. If you don't have one like this, if you have a long band, you can make a circle, tie it off and make a circle. And we'll need a yoga block or um, a pillow that's equivalent to a block. A note on the size of the weights that you're going to use for this workout. Now, I like to say that the weights that you use, I'm using different weights than someone else might. Um, I want you to think about lifting the weights. If you get to eight reps to 12 reps and it feels challenging, that's a good weight for you. If you get to 12 reps and you feel like you could go on forever, you might try lifting a heavier weight with good form. <laughs> so if you get to six reps and you can't finish, that might be too heavy or you find you're compensating. So I'm not going to give you a specific weight to use because it will change the more you do this workout the heavier weights you can use, perhaps when you're just first starting out, you can start a little bit lighter, see how it feels, and then adjust it according to your body. All right, let's get started. Come on down to your back. We're going to start with a little bit of release work here. Draw your right knee into your chest and let your left leg extend all the way out on the floor. Circle your ankles, create some blood flow in your legs. And then go the other direction. Remember, we're doing balance work today. So we're going to really open up your legs and your hips. And then go ahead and take your hand behind your right leg. We're going to point and straighten that leg. We're getting a little bit of hamstring release. Keep your back nice and soft on the floor. Great. Go ahead and drop that right foot to the floor. Draw your left knee into your chest. Hold on to that knee. Extend the right leg. Roll the ankles. And you popping and cracking, it's okay. <laughs> Sometimes waking up those muscles and then go the other direction. Great, and then go ahead and take your left hand behind your left thigh, bend and straighten here. Just notice there's no need to jerk it, yank it towards straight. You can just work with what you've got today. Whatever you've got is great. All right, then from here, we're gonna drop the left knee down to the floor. And go ahead and take your hands on your core. We're gonna rock the hips forward, rock the hips back, just very gently to find your neutral position. Go ahead and take one hand on your upper belly, one hand on your lower belly. We're gonna take some core breathing. When we inhale, everything will expand, full inhale. As you exhale, gather up that pelvic floor. Deep core breath, the ribs draw in as well. Good, like a canister squeezing. One more, inhale. Think of expansion from the top down, exhale, bottom up. And you can do this ha breath like you're fogging up a mirror on the ceiling. Good, let's do one more here, inhale. And exhale, squeeze and lift. Keep exhaling, keep exhaling, keep exhaling. See if you can feel those deep core muscles starting to turn on. Keep exhaling, keep exhaling, keep exhaling. Good, when you can't exhale anymore, go ahead and inhale again, inhale. Ooh, that was a big one. And exhale. Keep exhaling, keep exhaling, keep exhaling. That core is pulling in and up, in and up, in and up, in and up, in and up. Great. Good. And then release it, let it go. Take the arms overhead, roll your wrists out, and then roll in the other direction. Take the arms overhead, give a nice big stretch, and then bring it all the way back to the center. One more here, overhead, and back to the center. Great, roll those wrists out one more time. Good, all right. And then go ahead and grab your heavier weight. And if you want to start smaller, you absolutely can. We're gonna take that weight right over your chest. This is only 10 pounds, it looks a lot bigger, but it's not. <laughs> so reach the arms over your shoulders. Make sure you've got a really good grip on that weight. We're gonna inhale, exhale, find your core breath. Deep core draws in. Now hold that tension in your core, about 30%. We're going to take that weight overhead, drop it behind your head. Keep squeezing that core. Exhale, bring it all the way back up. Inhale, go all the way back. And exhale. Now, if you find that it's really hard to control the movement going back, drop your weight. That's A-OK. -okay. 
So I want you to have really good form, be able to go slowly because you're getting a lot of benefit by going slowly back overhead. Good. Now notice if you start to lift your rib cage when the arms go overhead, see if you can dig those heels into the ground, pull yourself forward and resist with your core. Yeah, the heavier the weight, the more you can exhale, really press towards the ceiling. All right, good, keep going here, exhale. Nice, this is core with a flat back. You can feel your core muscles working, right? Good, let's do three more here, exhale. One, and two, and last one. Good, slowly return the weight to the floor overhead. You can drop it to the floor, place your feet on the floor. We're gonna take a bridge here, scoop your pelvis back. We're gonna lift up here. Now, I don't want you to shove your hips towards the ceiling. Come up so you can really feel those glutes. If you need to put your hands on your glutes, you can do that too. Stay here. Good, breathe. Feel your glutes and your hamstrings starting to work. We're gonna slowly lower back down to the floor, tap the floor, exhale right back up, drive through your heels. I like to pick my toes up off the floor, so I'm not pressing through my toes. Inhale back down and exhale all the way up. Good, let's do two more here. Inhale down and exhale lift. We're just turning on the hips for the moment. Last one, inhale down and exhale, come up. Now hold here. If you need to bring your feet a little closer together, you can. We're gonna dig the heels into the ground. We're going to try to bring one foot off the floor at a time. So if your hip drops when you go to do that, maybe keep your hip or heel on the floor and just shift your weight from right to left. Eventually you wanna to work towards lifting the opposite leg up while your hips stay perfectly still. You're driving your heel down into the floor as you lift. Exhale as you lift. Inhale back down with control. Exhale with control. It's that stabilizing leg that's doing all of the work. Exhale down. Good. Spine is staying perfectly still, right? We are not jacking our hips up towards the ceiling. We are really focused on those glutes. And this is so good for hip strength and putting some resistance on those hip muscles. Got to get those glutes working. Good. Awesome. Let's do four more here. And two. And three. And four. Great. Good. Drop your hips all the way down to the floor. Excellent. All right. You're going to reach overhead. Grab onto that weight again. Now, if you're gonna pick it up, I want you to engage your core, pull back on your heels, lift that weight back over your shoulders. Anytime you're lifting a weight, your core is engaged. All right, here we go. We're gonna do one more set here of those overhead pulls. Find your brace in your core. Exhale, pull back on your heels. Inhale, overhead. Don't let your spine move at all. Exhale, pull. Good, go back nice and slowly with control. Maybe the set is a little easier. Exhale, two. All right, we do 10 here, three. And if you need to go slower than me, that's fine, four. Keep those ribs down, use that core, five. Good, pull back on those heels, six. I know it's a lot to think about. Exhale, seven. And eight. Good, last two here, nine, one more, yes, good. Now take that weight down to your hips. If those bridges earlier felt easy, I want you to leave the weight on your hips. If they did not, go ahead and put the weight back overhead. I'm gonna show you here doing these bridges with a weight on your hips. Drop your heels down into the floor, drive them down, pitch your tailbone back, so you're tucking your pelvis back like you were doing to drop that weight towards your belly. Now we're going to exhale, drive the hips up. Inhale, come all the way back down, slow it down to the floor. Exhale, lift. Drive those heels down. Inhale, 
you're off it back down. Good. That was three. Exhale. Press. Inhale back down. Good. We're going to do six more here. Exhale. Use your glutes. Inhale down. Yep. Good. Keep going here on your breath. If you start to feel your lower back, come down a little bit. Tip your pelvis back. Try to keep the weight in your glutes and your butt muscles. Good. If we start to overarch, we're going to feel it in the lower back. And that's not where we want this. Good. Last two here. Exhale, lift. And one more. Exhale, lift. Good. Now, if you have the weight on your hips, you're going to stay lifted. You're going to lift that weight up. Slowly put it all the way back in the floor. Good. Keep your hips lifted. Take the hands to the floor. We're doing another set of marches. Heels are pressing into the floor. Let's lift the knee. Drive through that standing leg. Inhale back down. Exhale. And back down. Good. Exhale. Are your legs shaking yet? <laughs> Exhale. Inhale down. Good. Go as slow as you need. Inhale back down. Good. Exhale. Inhale back down. Good. We're going to do four more here. This is that sweet spot. Right before you put your foot on the ground is where it's the hardest. And that's where you get the most benefit. So don't cheat yourself. Good. One more here. Yes. Good. All right. Drop your hips down to the floor. Draw your knees into your chest. Keep your spine nice and long. Just going to rock side to side on your back. Feel your shoulder blades on the back, on the floor. Great. All right. Now we're going to roll to our side. We're coming to a side plank. So your bottom knee is going to come down to the floor. Bottom arm will come down to the floor. So options here are to stay here with the bottom knee on the floor. Second stage is to bring the bottom knee to the floor. So my back leg is a kickstand and my hips are in line with my foot, hip, uh, ankle, hip, and shoulder. All right, so come join me in whichever position feels good for you. Either hip on the floor here, we do modified side leg lifts or off the ground. This is a lot more core, <laughs> All right? So if you are in this position, I want you to engage that deep core, press your elbow forward, reach your top arm towards the ceiling. We're gonna tap that top foot to the floor, exhale, lift. Good, stabilize with your hips. We're gonna do 10 here, two, three, four. Exhale when you lift, five and six, seven. Make sure that foot doesn't come forward. You're kicking it back towards the wall behind you. Last two, nine and 10. Good, nice, good, you can rest. Ah, good, and then we'll switch sides. So come on over to the other side. Bottom knee is down, bottom elbow is down. Again, same thing on this side. You can keep your hip on the floor, do these leg lifts, or you can lift your hip, come into your side plank, lift that deep core, press your elbow away from your knees, reach the top arm towards the ceiling. This front leg goes back. So you're using your glute, not your quad. All right, here we go, 10 and one. Second side is always harder because you've already worked. Stabilizing leg. <laughs> Exhale, three. Exhale, four and five, and six, seven, I know, and eight, <laughs> last two, nine, good, you can do it, one more, 10, oh, yes, good, all right, very good, okay, we're going to come over onto all fours, we're going to take a leg extension here, just go ahead and straighten your leg out, you're going to press forward and back on that foot, Start to wake up the ankle a little bit because we are doing some balance work here. This is a great place to practice your core breathing as well, like a half plank. Engage your core as you're rocking. Great. Other side, toes tuck, pitch forward and back. Get a little bit of strength. You can kick off of those toes. Very good. Find that core engaging as you're rocking. Also great for the shoulders. Great, and then we'll come through downward dog, flat back, bend your knees as much as you need to. 
Walk back, bend your knees, keep your back flat. Take your hands on your hips. Exhale, use those glutes to come all the way up to stand. All right, for our standing sequence, we're going to take our looped bands. We're gonna put it around your ankles. You need to hold onto a wall to get this on your feet. That's a-okay. We're gonna bring it down to just above your ankles. Now, we wanna pull apart enough that you feel like that band. If you were to pick up your feet, it would pull you back a little bit. Not so much that throws you off balance. You're gonna roll your ankles out. So we're gonna come in, give into the band a little bit, and then press all the way out. Just a couple of these here. Roll in and then press out. All right. Now that is the position that I want you to keep the tension in the band. Take your hands on your hip, little bend to your knees, all right? Tailbone tucked, core is engaged. We're going to penguin walk. You're going to peel your heel off the floor and then go to the other side. Now, if your balance is a little bit shaky, you can keep your foot planted on the floor. As you start to advance, you can lift that foot off the floor. The idea is that the band tension stays the same as you are penguin walking. So we're not pushing out to the side. We're just stabilizing here. Holy moly, outer hips, those glute medius are really working. Yeah. So what this is good for, and you notice that my body is not shifting this way. My body is perfectly still and I'm penguin walking, shifting my weight from one side to the other. Good, keep going. If you feel like this band gets really tight, you can always make it a lighter band. I'm really feeling this one. <laughs> but what's great about this is that we're starting to strengthen those outer hips that we need for really good balance. When you're walking and something becomes uneven, you walk on an uneven surface, then your outer hips will be able to catch you. Good. Come back to the center. Oh, awesome. Shake out your hips. Yeah, good. I know these are intense. <laughs> All right. So we're going to take that band off. You can kick it off to the side. And we're going to take a block between your knees and your weights. So I suggest getting your weights first, bringing them to your mat. I have my 10 pound weights here. I'm going to put them here and then grab your block. Go ahead and put your block between your knees. So if you have a pillow, a pillow works too, but either this way or this way, depending on your hip structure. I like to take it a little bit wider because it helps me get more internal rotation. I'm gonna take these weights. So I want you to hip hinge, go nice and low. Your back is staying very straight and very flat, right? We are not rounding forward. We are keeping it nice and flat. And we're gonna come all the way up. We're gonna hip hinge down, squeeze that block. No rounding. Exhale, drive through your glutes, come on up. Good, inhale back down. Exhale, drive through your heels. Good, squeeze that block. So you feel some openness in the back of your pelvis. Exhale. Good, inhale all the way down and exhale. If you would like to use a chair for this, you absolutely can. If you need that guide. Good. Inhale, you go down, find your core brace. Exhale, drive up. Awesome. You're doing great. Inhale down. Exhale, come on up. Very good. Inhale. Now you should be feeling quite a lot of glutes here. <laughs> Inhale down. Your shoulders are also stabilizing, right? We are not rounding forward. We're keeping our back nice and flat. Exhale, come up. Good. Let's do three more here. Exhale. One. Inhale down. Exhale, two. Last one. Inhale. Exhale, three. Great. All right. Hip hinge. Bring the weights back down to the floor. You are not rounding your back. Go ahead and take that block out. Grab your band. Use a lighter band for this one. And we're going to take that band up around your knees, above your knees. So not at your knees, but just above it. All right. Now we're going to bend the knees. I'm going to turn to the side so you can see what I'm doing. Engage the deep core. So you've got a lot of space in your back, a lot of core engagement. We're going to shift from one side to the other. We're going to kick straight back into the band and kick, right? You can join me if you'd like. If the balance is a challenge for you, you can put your hands 
on the wall and do this very slowly, working on individual balance. So it would look like this. We're shifting from one side to the other. Now, what I want you to think about is pressing from the back of your hip. That's why I have it above your knee. So you're focusing on kicking back from your glute, from your hip, rather than from your ankle. <laughs> so we actually get hip strength here. Keep that core engaged. Exhale as you kick back. We're gonna do about 40 here. Good, keep going back. And if it feels like you're not doing much, you might try a heavier band. If it feels like, oh my gosh, I can only do 10 of these, maybe try a lighter band. Where I want you to feel it is right back here in your glutes. Maybe a little inner thighs, maybe a little core, but definitely not in your lower back, all in your lower legs. Good, your upper body is staying very still. So if you notice that you're going like this, calm your upper body, stay very still, shift onto one leg. The more purpose you have with each exercise, the more benefit you get and the fewer you have to do, <laughs> which is I think the second is most important. Good, your hips getting tired yet? <laughs> Good, all right, let's do four more here. One and two, three, four. Awesome, good, nice, you can rest. Shake it out. All right, now we're gonna do one more set of those block squeeze um, squats with an overhead press. If you'd like to leave the overhead press out, you can go ahead and take your blocks or your block between your knees. Your weights are here. Go ahead and grab your weights. Bend your knees as much as you need to. Keep your back straight. Exhale. Come all the way up. Good. If you also don't want to put your weights on the floor, you can put them on a table and go walk and <laughs> waddle and get them. All right. So we're going to hip hinge, deadlift. Weights go down outside of your ankles. Exhale. Come on up. You're squeezing that block. Inhale as you squeeze down. Exhale, use those glutes to come up. Nice, inhale down. This is three. Inhale down, exhale four. Five, back is nice and straight. Six, seven, eight, nine let's do 12 here 10 good two more 11 one more 12 awesome good all right put your weights down take that block out we will do one more set of those penguin walks so grab your band notice i'm using the lighter band this time my legs are tired <laughs> and we're going to put the band around your ankles step out so you find that good tension right? Press the ankles out, find your deep core, bend your knees, and we'll ping pong penguin from one side to the other. So again, you can keep your toe on the floor if you want to focus on balancing and noticing what's happening in your core. I also like to keep my thumbs on my ribs and my fingers on my hips so I can tell if I'm really wobbling this way, right? Stay connected, straight as a board at the top. Your core is protecting your spine. Good. So good for balance training. And then when it feels good, you can practice with your balance on one side. Your balance actually comes from your hip and your core, not really from your feet, which is why we're doing all of this. So important. Good, let's do three more. Two. And three, good, great, you can shake it out. Woo. All right, we're gonna move on to a little bit of standing core work. So we're gonna grab maybe your medium sized weight, maybe your smaller weight. I'm gonna use a smaller weight just to show you. We're gonna do halos. So you're gonna bring your feet together, about hip distance apart, bend your knees, engage your core. Weight goes right in front of your chest. Now we're gonna take that weight and go all the way overhead, nice big circle. 
back down to the front, all the way around, back down to the front. I'll show you from this angle, all the way around to the front and around. Now, the key here is to stay connected in your core. Nothing moves here. <laughs> your ribs can move a little bit. You're finding some space in your shoulders as you're going, but your core does not disconnect. What I don't want to see is this, right? And rounding forward. Don't do that, right? Spine is straight. Come on with me. So feet are hip distance apart. We're going to go around. This can also really help with that overhead shoulder range of motion, which is so important. Take that weight as far back as you can. If the weight doesn't go that far, that's okay. We can work on your flexibility, but keep that deep core engaged and notice that your core kicks on when that weight goes overhead. All right, now that we've got the main point of the exercise going, now we can start to challenge your balance. If this feels really good, I want you to play around with putting one foot on your toes. So you're balancing more on one foot than the other. All right, if that feels too hard, go ahead and put both feet back flat on the floor. How's your core doing? Still connected? It's easy to forget. <laughs> but the more you practice, the more it connects. All right, now switch legs. So the other toes come down to the floor, all the way around and back to the side. Good. So move with control. I'm moving kind of quickly here, but if you feel like you get to a point where you're like, ah, I lose it, go a little bit slower. Really engage that core. See where you can work, where it's challenging for you, because that will give you the most benefit. Slow and steady wins the race. Good. All right, now, if you wanna see here, you can. Option is to switch legs, lift the foot off the floor. Now, if this is too hard, go back to toe or both feet, right? Progression. Now, if you're balancing here, you're really gonna have to work on that deep core engagement. Find your stability and your balance from your hip and your core. Now, if you are doing this one and you're like, can't fall, you're falling all over the place, just go back to the toe on the floor. Perfectly stable and fine. This is, I would rather you stay here than try to muscle your way just because you want to do it, right? The only time I want you to do this is if you can be perfectly still on your leg and your core. If you can't yet, it's okay. You will. All right. Let's do one more time each side after this one. <laughs> Good. Core is engaged. And the, I'm giving you progression so that you can do this workout over and over again. Let's switch legs. And you can see progress. Just super motivating. Maybe you're doing it next week with heavier weights. Maybe you're doing it the following week with the knee lifted off. So if you want to practice that, go ahead and practice. You will surprise yourself. The more you practice, the more good stress you put your body under, the stronger you will become, and the easier these workouts will be. I promise. Keep practicing, keep working out, stay within what is possible for you so that you continue growth that is right for your body. Good. One more each side. And again, if at a certain point you start wavering, go ahead and put the foot back on the floor. Great. Good. All right. Shake it out. Now we're going to use, let's use the same weight. We're going to take a little bit of weight switching. This is one of my favorite balance exercises with a solid core. We're going to bend the knees a little bit, tuck the tailbone. So the reason why I say that is sometimes we, we um, straighten our legs and we pitch our hips forward and then we can't use our core. So soften your knees, create more space in your back, and really connect in your core. Sometimes you got to really bend your knees and that's okay. All right. Now from here, you're going to hold that weight in front of your chest. We're going to take the weight with the right hand out to the side. Bring it back to center, switch hands. Go to the other side. Core stays still. Arms are doing all the work. Good. Notice how your core reacts to the weight going from one side to the other. Now, if this feels easy, we do the same thing we did before. 
You bring it back to the center. Shift your weight onto one foot. Bring your toes to the floor, and try it now. Right now we're weighing more on one side than the other. Excellent. Good. Core is engaged. It is stabilizing against uneven forces. Great. Let's go to the other side. Other foot down. Toes come to the ground and alternating. Great. Now, what this is really great for is practicing when you're reaching for something and you have to be on one foot. Your body will then know, okay, my core has to engage differently if the weight is on this side versus the other side. All right, come back to center. We're going to practice with one foot on the ground. So again, stages. If you want to stay with the toe, that's totally fine. Go ahead and lift the leg. All right, core is engaged. Yes, the heavier the weight, the harder this is. Right, we're shifting from one side to the other. Good. And notice that your hip stability, notice that your balance comes from your hip stability and your core. Right? It's from your foot a little bit, but really where it comes from is from your hip. It's okay to wobble. If you notice that you're falling or flying everywhere, then go ahead and put the toe back on the floor. Great. I'm going to switch sides. Also, it's great for the arms. <laughs> go ahead and lift the other leg into the chest. All right. And then switching. Sometimes one leg is different than the other. Now, notice your center of gravity is shifting. So, Let's be soft. If you're too rigid, if a tree was too rigid in the forest, it would fall over, right? If we're really stiff, it's gonna be a lot harder to balance. Give yourself and your muscles the grace, the ability to adapt and adjust. Are your arms getting tired yet? <laughs> Mine are. Okay, great, awesome. One more time each side, you got it. Excellent. Good, and you can rest. Good, roll the shoulders out. We're gonna grab your other little weight and come to a hip hinge. Little counter shoulder work to what we just did. Now we're gonna hinge at the hip. Core is engaged, right? Back is straight. This is what's so important with a forward bend movement is that we're not hin rounding here. Please don't do this, right? Back is straight, core is supporting you. Now we're gonna pull those weights to your Waist, elbows kick straight back, exhale. Good. Shoulder blades are pulling together. So we're not rounding forward and kicking back, right? We're not doing this. Rolling open, kicking back. Now, this is stage one. If you want to take a split stance, you can work on your balance, right? Glute is working, upper back is working. Kick back. Again, go slowly. See where you can feel those muscles engaging. Good. Three more on this side if you have a split stance. Great. Come back to the center. Other side. Yes. Good. Last two. Excellent. Good. Awesome. Stand up, roll those shoulders out. Good. Yes. All right. We've got one more arm exercise with some balance. We're going to peel the right foot off the floor. Let's peel one foot off the floor. You're going to brace your core. One arm is going to go up as the other one comes down. So your weight is on one foot. You have your toe on the ground for a little bit of extra balance, but we're not swinging the weights. We're not, you know, letting go of our core. We're staying very controlled in the core. Deep core is pulling in, pushing and pulling those weights. Now, if you want a little more challenge here, lift that knee off the floor. Yeah, if it gets too hard, it's okay. Put your toe back on the ground. Work with the stage where you are. Now, a word about 
weight size here. <laughs> so if you feel like you could go forever here, maybe next time do slightly heavier weights. Good, let's do four more here. One, two, three, and four. Great, let's switch legs. Toe comes down to the floor. Bend your knee, engage the core. Arm goes up and we'll switch. Great, so your core staying very still. What I don't wanna see is arching to go up, right? This is not using your core. You're staying connected into your core and you're really pissing using your arms. Again, we talked about efficiency of movement. I'm all about efficiency. Good, if this feels easy, go ahead and peel that foot all the way off the floor. Yes. Good. It's okay if your foot wobbles. It's getting information from the floor and helping you balance, right? Good. This is also really great practice for being able to tie your shoe. <laughs> Standing up. Good. Let's do six more here. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Great. Good. Awesome. Roll the shoulders out. Ah, oh, yes. With those same weights, take your feet about distance apart. Bring the weights towards your hips. Or do a little pull up here, right back, and all the way back. I like to call this a shoulder blade massage because we're squeezing all those muscles. Weight is not too heavy. We're just pulling some range of motion into the neck and shoulders, those upper arm muscles. Good. Do three more here. Yep, especially if you carry a lot of neck and shoulder tightness. And last one. Great. Go ahead and put those weights on the floor. Come to the wall. You're going to put your hand on the wall and then reach back and grab onto your right foot. If you can't reach your right foot, that's okay. You can put it on a chair. You could also use a band to put it back and catch it. And we're going to pull that heel into the chest. Now, you can also practice your balance here. If you want to come into the center of the room, just know your balance, right? If you need to put your hand on the wall, even a pinky on the wall can help. You're going to grab onto that foot. Knees come together. Hips move forward. And the knee moves back in space. This is the biggest mistake I see with this hip flexor quad stretch is that we come here and this is doing nothing. <laughs> All right, so let me help you out. Bring the knees together, knee back, hips forward. Breathe into the entire front quad. Hip flexor, if you'd like to reach that arm up overhead, you're welcome to. And again, then let's practice. Good, and then drop the foot down to the floor and switch to the other side. So grab your foot if you can. If it's hard, you can use a band. Knees together, knee back, hips forward. Good, breathe here, reach the arm up overhead. Full breaths here. Notice any sensations. You can feel free to push that knee back even more. Press your foot into your hand. <sighs> Good. The hard work is done. You can relax here. Great. All right. And then release your foot. You're going to take your right foot forward. Put your heel on the ground. Bend your left knee and hip hinge forward. You're not rounding your back. You're bringing your hands down to your right knee, and we're stretching out that hamstring. You can point and flex your foot. Good. Sit back into it. Come out, sit back into it. Let's do that two more times. Good. So we're just getting that back of the leg stretch with a straight spine. Good. Switch sides. Left foot goes forward. Heel goes into the ground. We're going to come in and out. So we're hinging at the hip. If this is hard for you to feel the stretch, you could also put your foot up on a chair and go here. Just make sure you're hinging at your hips, not at your back. Good. And this is often where we need the most flexibility with osteoporosis as well, is making sure that we've got flexibility in our hips so our hip muscles can work and protect us. Good. Excellent. All right, come back to the center. Swing the arms out around and up overhead. Exhale, drop them. Good. Two more like that. Inhale, sweep out around and up. Exhale, drop and swing. 
Good. One more, all the way out, around and up, and swing. Great. Reach both arms up overhead. We're going to reach the one arm up, one arm down. So you're just reaching straight up to the ceiling. The other arm is reaching towards your toes. Big breath. We're not twisting. We're simply stretching laterally and letting your core engage as well, letting your shoulders release. So reach up and down evenly. Great. Release it. Shake your arms out. Thank you so much for joining me.